So how do you make SpaceX Starlink better for only $2.99 a month? That's a pretty damn good question. Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. That smokiness of the lap song is so good, so good guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a kind of a technical Starlink, but also general ISP day. Kind of strange, but it is a all-encompassing day for $2.99. It really doesn't matter if you're using Starlink or if you're using QsNet or Viasat or some other ISP that uses CGNAT. This $2.99 is going to make your life less miserable and you're going to get probably 2x, 3x, 4x out of your ISP because of it. Really, really powerful stuff today. So before I get into it, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, go pick them up. They are free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you get anything, any value out of this video, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. If you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, please consider doing so. And if you have, click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. If you just wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here. You can click that, give a dollar or two. That'd be much appreciated, but it's not necessary. What would be even better is if you became a member of the channel. I would love having you. So. This video is a means of me doing a response to a lot of people that have asked me very similar questions in the JC Live event, the JC Live show that I do on Friday nights. If you haven't joined us on JC Live, do so. 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Usually we go live and we answer all of your questions for an hour and a half, two hours sometimes. It's a lot of fun and there's a lot of you guys that show up. I really do appreciate that also. That is great. This JC Live thing is just becoming bigger and bigger. So definitely stop by. So many of the questions are very similar and they have to do with CGNAT. Now, if you don't know what CGNAT is, basically it's carrier grade network address translation. It's a means of using IPv4 IP addresses cheaply, let's say. So you could use one or your ISP can use one IP address for a multitude of people. I'll get into that in just a second. Well, there's a lot of things that people want to do with Starlink or ISPs that only provide CGNAT instead of like a static IP address. And this could be Viasat also or HughesNet or any of these service providers. And what ends up happening is, is it makes it very difficult for you to do certain tasks. Now to make CGNAT a little bit clearer so that you understand what this is all about. Because if I just tell you things, that's all great. But if I explain things, you'll actually learn something and then you can take that along with you. So what many ISPs or internet service providers do today is like I said before, they will use the same IP address for a multitude of people. So. One IP address might be for a hundred different people and then they have to figure out where the information or the data goes when you actually send out a request. Think of it this way. So let's say you had a building, an apartment building at 111 East Main Street, for example, and the building was 10 stories high and there was 10 apartments on each floor. So you got a total of a hundred people living at 111 East Main Street. And that mail room decides where your mail goes. So let's say you ordered something from Amazon and the driver comes to 111 East Main and brings the package to the mail room. Now the mail room will have to figure out where does that package go? Because remember, all 100 people have the exact same IP address the same address, 111 East Main. So the mail room would have to figure out where you're located in the building to move that package to you. Kind of get it? So what ends up happening is, is the ISP ends up once again using only that one single IP address for the 100 people. And then there's a couple of bits at the end of this data that tells it which apartment to send the data to. Now this adds latency. 
number one. But number two, everyone has the same IP address, so it makes things very, very hard when you're dealing with remote access. So a lot of people have asked me over the last year, year and a half, how do I do certain things with CGNAT that is being used by SpaceX Starlink? So what are some of these things? I'm going to go through about 12 of them that I wrote down. And once again, this is all from you guys that have asked me these questions. So number one, you have remote desktop. Some people need to access their computer or a remote application, but while they're away, let's say on a business trip. Also, there's people that are looking to access their home automation system, maybe like a smart thermostat, some type of lighting or other type of controls, maybe a smart door lock or something like that and they want to be able to access it while they're on the go. Also, you have folks that are looking to have a media server at their home or in their office, maybe a Plex server. Maybe you travel a lot and you're in a hotel and you want to watch some of the 5,000 movies that you have on your Plex server at home. You can do that. Some of the other questions had to do with online gaming. Can I online game with a CG NAT type of setup. And while you can, it still makes it difficult because you do not have a static IP address and that IP address is constantly changing. This is very important when it comes to Xbox and PlayStation. Some folks have told me that their Xbox or their PS5 just simply don't work. Certain games don't work with this CG NAT type of setup. They want, number one, a static IP address, but number two, they wanna be able to port Port forward. Port forwarding is really important when you're trying to do chats or some type of comms between people. Also, I've heard folks that are looking to have a web server or maybe some type of web application at their home or office that they can access when they are remote. Some folks are looking to just simply print and print while they're not at home or maybe access some other type of device like a NAS device, which is a network attached storage device and they want to access your data, your files, maybe a PDF while you're once again sitting at a hotel room or some type of PowerPoint. Well, you can do that if you have a means to tunnel into it. Other folks, actually a lot of you guys that are RVers or people that travel a lot, they want to have some type of access to either CCTV, which is like a closed circuit TV, so they can monitor stuff that's going on around their RV, or maybe just simply access to their home surveillance system when they are away. That could be their security cameras or a ring doorbell or some type of motion sensors or whatever. You can do that once again if you have a static IP, whereas with CG NAT, it is extremely difficult and basically almost impossible. Now, other folks, like my mother, for example, that has a medical device at the house that is constantly being accessed by the doctors. And to do that, since this is sensitive data, they need to be able to not only collect the sensitive data, do some type of analysis on that sensitive data, and access it remotely, they need to have a IP address that is static so that they can just tunnel right into that IP and not have this CG NAT variable address that's constantly changing. It just simply doesn't work. Now, when I was just talking about CCTV as well as home surveillance and ring doorbells, for example, I did a lookup just to see what do you need to do for a ring camera to be able to access it remotely, but securely remotely? Not only do you need a static IP address, but you also need to do port forwarding. And port forwarding is very important for all of the things that I just listed. And when I looked up what ports need to be forwarded for a ring camera and a ring camera application, for example, it says port 80, HTTP, as well as port 443, which is your secure or HTTPS, port 123, which is a UDP port, and port 15056, as well as 53, and 1234. It says 1234 is used for certain data communication between the Ring device and your Ring app. So here you can see there's about six different ports that you actually have to forward for it to actually work properly. Now, is there ways around that? Yes, kind of, sort of, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So the best way to do it, obviously, is to number one, have a static IP address, and number two, be able to do port forwarding. 
both things simultaneously. So the majority of people out there that have, for example, like Cox or maybe fiber or some type of terrestrial, not non-terrestrial, not satellite, but terrestrial type of network system, that is some of the bigger folks, they will allow you to purchase an IP address for a set fee. Maybe it's $5 a month, $10 a month, sometimes $25 a month, and you might get one IP address or two IP addresses. Some of them don't even allow you to do port forwarding, and if you can, it's only certain ports due to security reasons. And that ends up being a problem because even if you get one of those IP addresses, you might not be able to forward the right ports, like I was saying just a second ago. Well, what I have been doing as of about eh, six, seven months ago now, I've been using Pure VPN. And you're like, well, what the hell is PureVPN going to do for all of this? Well, PureVPN is not just a VPN company, but it also allows you to purchase a static IP address and do port forwarding. And how much does it cost? $2.99. That is it. So for $2.99, you can get an additional IP address as well as be able to do port forwarding with that service. As simple as that. So what I've been doing is I've been using that static IP address so that I can do a lot of things like different gaming for my son where he's on Xbox a lot. I'll use that static IP address. Also, sometimes he wants to create his own game server so that he can play with his friends, but only his friends because only his friends have that IP address. So we can forward those ports that need to be forward and then give his friends the specific IP address to that server and then he can play with them. It does doesn't matter if it is a Call of Duty game or if it's a Minecraft game, he can now create that server. Super cool. So there's so much added functionality that you get for this $2.99. It is crazy, absolutely crazy. So in my personal opinion, if you're looking to do any of those things that I listed, and a lot of you have asked me for this information over the last year plus, if you're looking to do any of those things, simply get a static IP address that allows for port forwarding and you are golden. Once again, it doesn't matter if you're using SpaceX Starlink, if you're using Viasat, if you're using HughesNet, or you're using some type of local terrestrial-based ISP, internet service provider, that uses CGNAT, you still have a problem because CGNAT is the problem. Why is it? Once again, like I said before, it's because a multitude of people get the exact same IP address and then the ISP has to determine <laughs> which mailbox to put your mail in. So if you want to get a static IP address and port forwarding, check out Pure VPN. They gave me a link. If you go over to jchristina.com forward slash VPN, once again, jchristina.com forward slash VPN, you'll get 15% off any one of their plans. Once again, 15% off. That's a really good deal because they already have like 70, 80% off going on right now. They have some kind of big sale. So once again, check that out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash slash VPN, but this is the big but. Make sure when you're signing up for service, you click or toggle the little button that says that you want port forwarding and a static IP address. It is once again like $2.99, that is it, but make sure you check mark that because that is the one thing that you absolutely must have, a static IP address with the ability to do port forwarding. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this content. If you have, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to tell your friends, family, colleagues, all the rest of the folks that you talk to in the intro webs to go and check out this channel. I would really appreciate it. We want to grow it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.